just jumping right in, can you tell me a little bit about your ties to Pennsylvania? So I was born and raised in Pennsylvania. I was actually born in Philly, so I'm a Philly girl through and through. I then went to school out in Pittsburgh and then went to school in New York and kind of settled in Harrisburg. So I have been across the state. <laughs> Very cool. um, and then what inspired Romancing the Pages? So I'm a big Star Wars fan and my favorite character is young Obi-Wan Kenobi and it's kind of based on a fan fiction but also about my love for the Jersey Shore because it takes place in Avalon, New Jersey. So if you are familiar with the Jersey Shore, you will see a lot of familiar landmarks mentioned in the book. So it's kind of an ode to my favorite vacation spot and a favorite character. I mean, that was kind of why I picked it for June. I was like, it's perfect beach read. Right, yes, right yes, there. exactly. That's what I'm telling you. You have to read this on the beach. Uh, yeah. In Avalon, it's even better. It doesn't make me <laughs> upset that I wasn't on the beach. Anymore, right? But... <laughs> um, and with the inspiration, maybe not, but is this book like autobiographical or have autobiographical elements? Well, I do base a lot of my main female characters on myself because most authors write about what they know. So I take certain quirks about me or people I know and put them into some really memorable characters. Perfect source material. Right, exactly, <laughs> all the time. Um, and then can you just talk about like the writing process or like what a typical day looks like for you? <laughs> so my writing process kind of varies. There's people that plot first and there's people that are what you call pantsers, who kind of fly by the seat of their pants and write the story as they go. I've done both. Probably more of a fly by the seat of my pants. It honestly depends on which project I'm working on because sometimes I'm either writing in chronological order and sometimes the characters are like, no, let's work on the ending now. So I will jump to the ending, write that first and then work my way back. So it's chaos most of the time. Uh, and have you noticed that style like change or become more like developed over your four, five novels? Seven. Seven, oh my gosh. Yeah. Totally <laughs> okay, There's more. a lot now, yeah. <laughs> have you noticed your writing style change or develop? <laughs> yeah. Um, so with writing style, I believe every day you write, you get better. So of course, there's parts of my more current books that I like better than my older, earlier books, but they're all really fun in any, their own unique way. And it's always a learning process. So what I learned in my first book, I still use in my newest book. So it's always going to be a learning process. The publishing world is changing, the marketing world is changing, so you just have to be flexible. Sage advice. Yeah. <laughs> and um, then did you always want to become an author or like sort of what was your journey I guess to getting here? <laughs> so my mantra for most of my life was to be a New York Times best-selling author and I chickened out right after school. Life happens, work happens, so I lost, <clears throat> I lost my job uh, back in 2022, I think it was. And I was like, hey, you know what? No time like the present. Let's just write a story. So I sat and I wrote a book that has not been published yet, but that one is hopefully going to be maybe traditionally published. But right now I'm doing self-publishing. But it honestly started back in first grade. Um, my teacher, Mrs. Hoover at Reamstown Elementary, uh, did the writing process. So she took us through the stages of plotting out a timeline, making, writing your story, edi editing it, and then she would actually type it up and we could illustrate it and she would bind it together, all laminated and everything. And whoo, once I hit that high, man, there was no coming back. And my writing, love kind of researched um, in middle school. I had an amazing English teacher, Miss Stroop, who was reading my poetry. He's like, this is really good. You should keep doing this. So I, I did, and I 
didn't stop well until, you know, after college, but I'm very glad to be back. It's definitely what I always wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> Glad you found your way back. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, so can you, I mean, we touched a little bit on Mary, but can you talk about your two main characters or like how you built their personalities, inspiration behind them, that sort of thing? So my two main characters in Romancing the Pages are uh, Mari and Ben. And Ben is a kind of absent-minded professor kind of shy, quiet, pretty awkward, doesn't know how to act around women. And Mari is kind of a reclusive author who's stuck with writer's block. So she's a little bit more outgoing than Ben, but probably just as awkward. <laughs> and I saw the playlist on the inside of the book. Um, how did you like pick the songs for that? So during my writing process, I love to write to music and I always pick songs that either reflect the mood or the tone or maybe the lyrics really speak out to me. Um, so a lot of my book, all my books have a playlist. So I usually use that playlist to write the book. So a lot of that music inspires the book and it's just a fun way to make it kind of more of an all-encompassing experience when you read. And I know I appreciate that as a reader myself. Yeah, that was really cool. I just pulled it up and then I was getting distracted, like reading while listening. But right. Like, it's still <laughs> in a playlist. Like I just had it all in the car. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like Apple usually recommends some songs to me like, okay, this yeah, is sure. odd, this one. Yeah. It's okay. Really yeah. <laughs> um, and do you have any like advice or just words of wisdom for any like aspiring writers out there? So if you're a new writer or want to start writing, I do recommend just start because nobody's first draft is ever pretty. Sometimes it's not even completely legible, but you wrote something. And as long as you write something every day, you're a writer. And you can choose to be traditionally published. You can self-publish. You can publish on Wattpad or some fanfic sites, whatever, and you're an author. And it's honestly that easy, but definitely take time to hone your craft. Ask for advice, seek out advice, read books on writing, read. Reading is definitely the number one thing you can do as a writer to benefit you most of all. A lot, if not all, of our authors have said something very similar. So oh yeah. It has to be good advice. Right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, because here they do a story makers book club and every month they give us a, a theme, but it's based on our genre that we write in and something that can help us grow as a writer. So last month it was an independently published book in your genre. Oh no, it's a storyline you would like to use in your. So it's interesting to see what's out there that other people have wrote to see how you can different make it different and make it yours. So yeah. it's really, really fun. That is cool. I really like the quote, I'm not gonna butcher it, but something about like, like every book is just a rewrite of another piece of literature. It or is, something like that. pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. When I was in school, I would like war against it. Like, no, I can be completely original. And now I've kind of given up. Like, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like a mixed salad. So yeah. like you take a little bit from this book, take a little bit from that book, and you like this writer's style or humor or whatever, yeah. and you put it in. So yeah, it's just, it's a mixed bag of everything. It's blended <laughs> up and make it your own. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and do you have any plans for future projects? Oh my, <laughs> so um, like most writers, we have a lot of projects in the works. So right now I am writing the sequel to Spellbound in the Stacks, which should be out in September. And I also have a plan for a baseball romance out during spring training, so March of next year. And then I'm going to have book three of my Thistlefield Estate book series out next summer. So, and I don't know, a dozen other ones in the works. So, yes, it doesn't stop. Busy, busy. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I think that was all the questions that I had, but like if okay. there's anything that you want to add, feel free. Well, if you are a big fan of books and love to read or would like to meet me, there's some great 
uh, book signing events coming up in the local area, Central PA. So in August at Cupboard Maker Books, it's Romance Bookstore, Bookstore Romance Weekend. Um, that's in August. And then we have Books, Books, Books in Lancaster. So there's lots of great events coming up. There's also Chocolate Town Book Fest out in Hershey. So if you're a book lover and want to meet tons of amazing local authors, please come to one of those events. They are all free or a very small admission fee.